Hi, welcome back to Code Cloud and DevOps Ask Me Anything. I will combine various questions here because the answers to them are pretty much similar in the way I'll approach them. Uh, so I will go with the first question, which goes thus. Please, can you highlight a clear path to follow to become a DevOps engineer, preferably in bulleted points? The other question goes thus. What's your guide on someone or to someone looking to start a pathway to DevOps in 2023? The other one is, what is the easiest requirement and plan to study when someone wants to become a DevOps engineer? Thanks for your question. I particularly like this set of questions and I'll do my best to answer them as comprehensively and precisely as possible. Now, you may also benefit from previous videos I've made talking about basics you need to learn in cloud and DevOps and I'll link them above and also in the video description and pinned comments so be sure to check those out. Now, if you, either you need to IT or you understand a bit of software development or IT, you can join this list wherever it fits you. And the first one, the first thing I think you need to learn because it differs from person to person in terms of what they think you need to learn, but I'll walk through my own experience of how I became a DevOps engineer, although I didn't document it at that time, but thinking back, those are some of the steps I think I took. The first step is understanding software development lifecycle, uh, be it Agile, be it Scrum, be it uh, Waterfall, be it Extreme Programming, understand the process it takes to make software. Once you understand that, here you don't actually need to learn coding. You, you, you learn things like uh, flowcharts, algorithms, pseudocode, all those kind of things are what you learn in this stage. So you are not actually writing code yet. Uh, so it's sort of the introductory phase into getting into the software world because essentially if you're doing DevOps, you are deploying software. So understand software development lifecycle management, SDLC. And the next step I think that is necessary to learn, which I think is ne uh, is great is, because you don't necessarily have to be a programmer, uh, you will need to learn a scripting language. It's not a programming language, well, it's sort of a programming language, but for people who actually do infrastructure, cloud management, and DevOps. So you need to learn things like PowerShell, Bash, or Python. Now, I learned all these three myself, although with years apart, but I think the one that has been of most impact to me out of this, because I'm in the Microsoft world, is PowerShell. PowerShell is a very powerful scripting language. Bash also is, if you're in the Linux world, and Python is also a great scripting language you can use uh, for your learning. So, learn a scripting language like PowerShell, Bash, or Python. And after that, you would need to then learn fundamentals of cloud. Learn about availability zones, availability sets, uh, cloud regions, geographies, all those kind of things that make up what cloud really is. And most of the concepts you learn in cloud fundamentals are not actually cloud platform specific, like Azure, AWS, GCP. So learn cloud fundamentals and then decide what cloud or what set of clouds you want to focus on. I personally focus on Azure because that is where I've decided to invest all of my energy in and I've sort of become a principal in knowing what Azure is and what to expect in future uh, iterations of the platform. So you learn cloud fundamentals and then you learn your DevOps tools and services. What do I mean by this? You want to learn things you would use to achieve your DevOps goals. You've learned cloud, you've learned scripting. How do you then combine the skills together? You need a tool. You need a set of tools and services. Uh, tools I particularly love using from day to day are tools embedded in the platform called Azure DevOps because it's more like an all-in-one solution to help me achieve things. So you can do work management, you can do pipelines, you can do tests, you can do artifacts, you can do releases, you can connect to various clouds from inside of Azure DevOps. So those, that is a DevOps tool of my choosing. You can also learn things like GitHub. Uh, GitHub uh, for you know managing work, managing releases, managing build, testing, code dependency, code scanning, all those kind of things you learn in GitHub. There are multiple other DevOps tools and services you can also learn like Bitbucket, like AWS Code Deploy, if that's the name, Octopus Deploy, uh, Jira, you name it. There's just a whole lot of them out there, but those are the two that I think are particularly very, very great and I would highly recommend for anyone. So you learn to things like planning, planning uh, software releases, using your understanding of software development lifecycle, 
and also source control like gate, TFVC, Mercurial subversion. You learn CICD, which is continuous integration and continuous deployment. And that is simply automating build and release of software. You also learn things like testing, artifact management. So when you build your code, where do you push that generated code to? Now, the next step in line after you've learned your DevOps tools and services, which I think is necessary, is you put your learning to practice. De deploy an hello world application, deploy a to do application, deploy complex applications, learn and improve on that from time to time. Now, I'm going to tell you this for free. Uh, people who are great in this DevOps world, they actually learn every single day based on the work they do. Now, there's no one size fits all. Your learning and experiences will differ from the next person to you. But what you should do is from every bad experience, from every good experience, from every not so good experience, from every not so bad experience, learn something and improve based on that. So because essentially for everyone, even not just in DevOps, learning and improving is what makes us better from time to time. Now, there's a lot to uncover in each of the items I've listed, but I think they all sum up the entirety of what you actually need to get started, get your leg in the game, and then you can expand and you know, plant your base in a particular platform. For example, I have planted myself so firmly in the Azure world where I know so much about Azure, so much about Azure DevOps, so much about GitHub, so much about how all these services tie together that I can literally wake up today and tell anyone about cloud from day, from dawn to dusk without flinching. Of course, I need to drink some water in between. But of course, I'll be happy to make individual videos on these various things in the future and more days because the videos I've made on it previously are actually a little bitty hold. So I'll probably have to do a refresh on those videos and actually post them also in the future. So what you want to do is subscribe so you don't miss when I post those kind of videos. And I hope that answer your questions to an extent and give you a bit of clarity on the next steps you need to take. And I look forward to actually having you learn. And if you have more questions about dev, about cloud, about DevOps, you can send them in the link showing on your screen right now. And you can also scan the QR code showing right about now. And also I'll put the links in the video comments and description. So I'll pin the comment actually, and I'll put it also in the video description. And remember to give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends. And remember to subscribe, please subscribe so that you do not miss any further videos like this that I make. Until I come your way again with another video, stay safe and goodbye.